overview of what we've been studying all week long. Um, first thing I want to mention is that we know that God has a plan for salvation. God has a plan for salvation. It's not my plan. It's not Reverend Taylor's plan. It's not your plan. It's God's plan for our salvation. We know that all roads may lead to Rome, but all religions do not lead to God and salvation. So we have to be careful who we study under. We have to be careful where we attend church because not all religions are based on the word. So we want to make sure that we are studying and learning based on the word, based on what God would have us to learn. Um, there's only one way, and it's God's way. And God's way is to Jesus Christ. John 14, 6 says, Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. That's John 14, 6. So God's salvation is threefold. First, Christ appeared on the earth to save you from the penalty of sin by putting your sin away by the sacrifice of himself on the cross. Second, he appeared in heaven in the presence of God after his resurrection to save you from the power of sin. Hebrews 9.24 says, For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the truth, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. John 2 verses 1 to 2 says, My dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin. But if anybody does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. And not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. So these scriptures, the third thing is, he will not appear again on this earth the second time as Lord of Lords and Kings of, I'm sorry, he will appear again on this earth the second time as Lord of Lords and King of Kings. That comes from Revelation 17, 14. And he's coming back to save you from the very presence of sin. So God has a plan for our salvation. And we've been talking about that plan and all of the aspects related to salvation. So we're going to do a little review here. Um, first of all, we gave a definition for sin. Um, the dictionary definition is an offense against religious or moral law, an action that is or is felt to be highly re reprehensible. So... But the biblical definition comes from 1 John, 3rd chapter, verse 4. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 3, 23. Um, what can save us from sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And so how are sinners saved from their sin? By accepting him as the son of God in the sacrificial death. That's true. That's how we, what leads to our salvation. Um, but we are really saved through a gift of grace. It's the gift of grace that saves us. Um, repentance is turning from sin to God. Grace is the unmerited, unearned favor of God. So, um, Sinners are saved from their sin through the gift of grace. Then how do we receive salvation? And Margaret, I think that's where you were going. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. By believing that Jesus is the Son of God, that he died for our sins, and um, trusting in, in our believing and reading the Bible and knowing that he is our salvation. He's our sacrificial lamb. Absolutely. Um, Galatians 3, verse 26. So in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. Okay. For all of you who are baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. So we know we have to repent, accept the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior, ask for forgiveness of our sin. And um, we can be saved. 
Amen. Amen. Good works contribute to our salvation. What do we say about that? No, who said no, it doesn't. No, 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 it doesn't. No, no. No, it doesn't. <clears throat> no, good works are the consequence of our salvation and not mm -hmm. its justification. Yes. You're that right. came from Titus 3 5. Mm -hmm. Since salvation is received by grace through faith, who or what is the object of our faith? And I say who, that Christ. should give you a clue. Right, Jesus yeah. Christ. 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 Jesus mm -hmm. Christ. Mm -hmm. Romans 5, 1. The next one is really easy. How did Jesus obtain our salvation? And on the cross. Don't be yeah. shy, speak we'll it out. <laughs> <laughs> Lean over there whispering. <laughs> oh, I said by, by dying on the cross. Yeah. That's it. Yes. Amen. Don't be shy by his death on the cross. Mm -hmm. Revelations 1 5. Is there salvation found outside of Jesus Christ? Another easy one. No. 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 No, no one no. can know God the Father except through the person mm -hmm. of Jesus Christ. John 14, 6. Mm. Does obedience to God's law have any merit? What as far as salvation is concerned? Yes. Yes. I, I say yes. So I gave you eight reasons why obedience is important. Who remembers one? Who remembers one of the eight? Jesus calls us to obey. Obedience is an act of worship. Uh -huh. God rewards God obedience. Reward. Yeah. Prove our love. Demonstrate yeah. our faith. Yes. Um, sin. That's it for me. Sin and death. Mm -hmm. Sacrifice. God rewards obedience. Yes. Also, obedience is better than sacrifice. Yeah, yeah. better than oh. sacrifice. Yeah. This obedience leads to death, and that's obedience right. leads to ho the ho holy living. I think that's what it that was. Yeah, that's right. Obedience, we experience the blessings of holy living. Mm -hmm. I think y'all were paying attention. Holy living, yeah. That's, yeah. That's <laughs> right. So, in terms of justification, mm -hmm. being pardoned and declared righteous. No one is justified by keeping the law or through good works. And that's important for us to remember. Scripture makes it clear that justification is received by faith in what Jesus has done for us. Obedience to Christ is motivated by love through the Holy Spirit. Okay. It is a cooperative effort, but obedience does not justify us. So obedience... Is within the framework of sanctification, the process of being conformed to the character of Christ. The Bible teaches us that salvation is the free gift of God. It is given by God's grace alone to be received through faith alone and not by something we do or earn. Therefore, we are made right with God through trusting in what Jesus did for us, not by what we can do for ourselves. We could never do for ourselves what Jesus did for us. No. Right. The basis for this faith is Jesus Christ. He alone lived a perfect life in our behalf and died an atoning death in the believer's place. The sinner is reconciled back to God only because of Jesus Christ. Through the Lamb of God who shed his blood, we have the forgiveness of sin. Salvation is freely offered to all who humbly confess their need of the Savior. In fact, there's no other name given mm -hmm. under heaven whereby we must be saved. saved yeah. So, again, it's a free gift. It's the only way we can get that gift is through Jesus Christ. And that's through repenting, accepting the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior, confessing our sins, and then placing him in our heart and following what the Bible tells us to do. And that doesn't seem like it's very hard. Mm -hmm. But it amazes me how many people don't have the time, don't think it's important. They just don't. 
They just don't. Some people on their dying bed, mm -hmm. all of a sudden they wake up and then they see the importance of it. Yeah. But that, that's not really fair fair to Jesus Christ who died on the cross for us. We're going to wait till the very last minute and then ask for that, ask for salvation. Now, you might get it, but so much better is it to walk with him, receive the blessings throughout your life. Amen. <clears throat> Did anybody else have anything else they thought was really important out of that first night? Let's talk about justification. On what basis does God pardon sins? Repeat your question. Uh, well, first, let's go to Romans 5.1. Oh. Let's go to Romans 5.1. You have it? Yeah. yeah. Okay, somebody want to read it? Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So the question was, on what basis does God pardon our sins? By faith in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. By faith and belief in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Um. Let's go to Galatians 2.16. I like to put my money into things that... Look at this. Galatians 2.16. Okay. Okay. Are good works ever part of the justification process? What does Galatians 2.16 say? That a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Even as we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law or by the works of the law. So no flesh. Be justified. So we cannot earn justification through rule mm -hmm. keeping or our own good works. So um, so good works are, are good works ever part of the justification process? No. 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 Absolutely not. And then we talked about James 2.24, where there seemed to be some who thought there was a contradiction that um, the statement that we cannot earn justification by our good works, um, that there was, a, um, I guess, some confusion about that when you read James 2.24. Let's read James 2.24 and then explain why we say there is no contradiction. 23. Uh, ye see then how that my works work a man is justified and not by faith only. That's James 2, 24? Yes. Yes. So um, is he saying, is he saying something different? How, why is it that we say that's not a contradiction? Because we have to um, have faith. Okay, well you see then, okay, let me see. You see then how they work say man is justified and not by faith only. Not by faith only. Well, remember we said that mm -hmm. um, it's just James is simply saying, if you're a Christian, there should be some appropriate works as the result of your professed faith in the, um, Jesus Christ. So if, you're, if you have faith in Jesus Christ, you would want to glorify the Lord. And you would do that through your works. Okay. okay. Gotcha. Yeah, because anyone can say that they are <coughs> saved, but 
don't let their light shine or do anything to back it up. It's faith without works is nothing. Right. But I guess the point we're trying to make is that you can't um, take credit for your works as being why you're saved. Right. Your okay. works are a result of you being oh, saved. The faith. Yeah, well, you're right, because some people do things just for self-gratification uh, instead of glorifying God by their works. That's right. Some people do it for other reasons. Yes. Even if I'm doing all the good works, if I haven't accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior, if I haven't repented, if I haven't been, um, asked for forgiveness of sin, if I haven't put Jesus Christ in my heart, Right. Then I'm not going to be saved. I could be doing all the work around the church, yeah. doing everything in every ministry, cleaning up, doing everything in the church. But if I haven't accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior, I'm not going to be saved. Right. Mm -hmm. Because of how much work we do. Right. But um, once you've accepted Him, you're going to want to do some work. Yeah. Yes. You're going to want to glorify His name. So I guess we just don't want to put the cart before the horse. Right. A uh, black batter. There, uh, there, I remember a long time ago, it was told there was someone who was a Sunday school teacher and he was a Sunday school teacher for years and he had never been saved. He taught Sunday school, but he was not saved. And right then and there, they had to um, have prayer with him and so he can accept Jesus Christ. You mean he had never... No. Accepted Jesus Christ in his heart. Nope. And he was uh, a Sunday school teacher. Wow. That won't happen at Open Door Baptist Church. I can promise you that. No, <laughs> but it happened. <laughs> it was, it was, it was <laughs> You just said about working and working around the church and thanking people working around the church and they think they saved, but they wasn't. And I guess if, if um, you haven't studied the word, you, I could see how people would think that's okay if they don't, they don't know any better. Mm -hmm. I can see how they would think it was okay. Yeah, but if you, how they gonna think that's okay? If that's what I'm thinking. The word, <laughs> they're studying the word and telling yeah. the word. That's what I'm saying. If they haven't studied the word, but if they Sunday haven't school, been in the word, was a Sunday, she said he was a Sunday school, Sunday school teacher. Yeah, he was, he was a Sunday school He's reading it and to study the word. word. You know How many times have you read something and you still didn't connect the dots? Right. Exactly. Right. But I never tried to tell anybody else about it. But right <laughs> then and there, but something in that class caused him to realize that he wasn't saving. He asked them he accepted Jesus that day, that, that, mm. that minute. He, right. He, so he must yeah, have read something lesson. at a point. He read something that made him realize he and needed to do something. Might have, something yeah. might have convicted him. Yeah, mm -hmm. in, in that study. Okay. Yes. That's and, and a lot. I think that's a common mistake in church. People grow up in church. They in church for for since kids, and and sometimes they walk up to the front as youngsters because that's what they think they're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. You know, and maybe the motive was not necessarily mm -hmm. um, joining Jesus. Maybe they wanted to sing on the choir, and somebody said, "Oh, you got to be." A member of the church to do that, or whatever stipulation that we allow that was allowed to shape that, and mm -hmm. then they, and he and he could have been a great teacher, mm -hmm. yeah, of information, you yeah. know. But the, the the good news is that he he finally got it, yeah. finally got it. And yeah. that's, that's sometimes that's why some people want to be baptized again. Yeah, I was getting ready. Yeah. They they did it at an early age and, and they didn't understand what they were right. doing. Mm -hmm. And I was one of them because uh, I did it because they told me I was supposed to do it. Yeah. I was a victim of no. that because I belonged to a church where they the only way you could sing on the choir was you had to be baptized. So I got mm -hmm. baptized at nine mm -hmm. to sing on the choir. Mm -hmm. And so when I came to Open Door and I heard that they didn't require the children to be baptized to sing, mm -hmm. I was glad about that because you really want um, a person to take that step when they have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as their right. Savior. Right. Not because they want to sing on the choir or they want to usher. Mm -hmm. Well, that might be old time stuff. I don't know if any of you are familiar about sitting on the morning's bench 
They would have a revival once a year and everybody had to come up front and sit on sit on that front pew. Oh, especially in the country, you right. Yeah. <laughs> I know all about it. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Oh, um, but I actually can understand a child. Because when you're a child, as the Bible says, you act like a child. I just can't understand a grown person. Yes, it is. Pulling that off, you know. Mm -hmm. you, I want to teach you about Jesus, but I don't believe it myself. Mm. I'm not going to teach you nothing I don't believe in. You, oh, this yeah. is a strange thing for me. Mm -hmm. Yes. The thing about it, when you teach Sunday school, right? Mm -hmm. Most of the time you have a Sunday school book that right. has certain scriptures that have certain things. Mm -hmm. You don't necessarily have to understand it to be able to get up there and say, okay, you read the first block of scripture. <laughs> All right, you I don't don't have, that's right. You don't have to understand <laughs> it. But I'm saying you're trying to tell somebody over here how to drive a car and you can't even crank it up. That happens <laughs> even with the people who are saved does that as well. I mean, there are people who are saved who actually does the same thing. They get up and teach just for notice. Like, um, what's his name? Mr. Jefferson was saying earlier, for sure. You know, a lot of people in the church, they just there, doing, going through the motion. They're not really applying to the word what's coming to them. You know, like we read the Bible and you read the Bible, but what you read and you put supply to your life, but they don't. You're just there. And even though you say. Just understand that there are people that with all good intentions of doing things in the church, mm -hmm. but they haven't gotten to the important part of studying the Bible. Mm -hmm. Why? Right. Doing the Bible right. study, right. understanding what the scriptures say. Right. You know, exactly. Baby. That's why it's important to have vacation Bible school. That's why it's important right. to have Bible study. Mm -hmm. Important to have Sunday school. Yeah. And it's so important to understand. What'd you say, Selena? I said it's important for you to attend. That's yeah. Right. <laughs> Especially if you want to be a leader in something. Mm -hmm. ah. um, the next question like, I had uh, was, have we truly been justified in and through Jesus Christ? Um, yes. Okay, yes. Let's look at Romans 3, 23 to 25. And Romans 5.18. Because see how easy it is to say yes? Uh-huh. <laughs> Why do we say yes? Why do we say yes? Yeah. I, got, I got Romans 5.18. Okay. Tell me what it says. Therefore, as by the offense that one judgment came up on all men to combination, combination, condemnation, even so by the righteous of one, the free gift, came up on all men until justification of life. Okay, that's one. Now, what did um, Romans 3, 23 to 25 say? For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God did set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood, to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that we are that are passed through the forbearance of God. So you see how when when you read the scripture, you get the full explanation. Mm -hmm. It's not just yes. Yeah. It's yeah. yes because all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, but mm -hmm. have been justified freely by his grace. That's the answer. <clears throat> Redemption, that is, yeah. <clears throat> so having been justified by faith, how should we now live? Remember, I gave you five reasons. Yeah, y'all got to give it. Can you give them that? Can you do slowly so I can write them all down? <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right, that fast. <laughs> y'all were, were talking real fast, and I wasn't here that day when y'all went over there. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, one one reason. Let's see. One reason, reason. Family. My words, my list. Who's going to give them the five and talk slowly so that Selena can get it? <laughs> you have all five of them, Brother Jefferson? So I can get it too. <laughs> okay. your, wife, your wife had all of them. I have all of them. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Rosa, was that focus power of faith? <laughs> Mr. Rosa, give them all five. 
Okay, all right, we need to focus on um, how our faith, never oh. use faith. Free and abundance. Precious yeah. in life. Huh? I think that's faith the right thing. So the first one is the focus, focus power of faith, faith breed abundance. Breeds abundance. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. Focus on faith breeds abundance. Okay. The focus, focus power of faith. Of faith. Oh, power. Of okay. faith. Okay. Breeds abundance. Breeds abundance. Okay. Number two. Never use faith. Whatever doesn't kill you makes you strong. That's number two. Whatever doesn't kill you. Makes you strong. And faith helps you focus in life. Purpose in life. Discover your purpose in life. Discover mm -hmm. your purpose. To discover your purpose in life. Faith, mm -hmm. faith helps you to discover your purpose in life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Act as a halfway. Oh, no. <laughs> Number four. <laughs> in life. Faith oh, trumps stress, anxiety, and fear. What you say, Sister Dale? Faith what? Faith trumps stress, anxiety, and fear. Top my list. What's the last one? Faith is a pathway to finding solutions. Hey, faith is a pathway to finding solutions. It acts as a pathway a of pathway. finding solutions. So the focus power of faith brings abundance. When we train our minds to think in abundance and we hold unwavering faith, we gravitate towards that. When we think good things, because we believe, we expect good things. Of course, if we expect bad things, we'll get bad things. Number two, whatever doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Times might be bad, and you might want to throw in the towel, but never lose faith. For a person without faith is like a stream without water. They'll cease to exist. Number three, faith helps you to discover your purpose in life. Everything in life is easier to get through when we have faith. Okay. It's the guiding light that helps push us towards our purpose. Number four, faith trumps stress, anxiety, and fear. Learn to harbor faith and use it to eliminate stress, anxiety, and fear. Believe and expect that good things will happen, and they will. This isn't about ignoring your problems. This is about knowing that your situation will improve deep down inside your heart and your soul. Then number five, it acts as the pathway to finding solutions. Never give up on your hopes and your dreams just because you had an initial setback. Mm -hmm. Never give up. Lean on your faith as often as possible and you'll soon come to realize why having unwavering faith is so important in life. There are really good reasons to have faith. Roya. Yes. Now I put faith is, a, I didn't like the word acts as a pathway. I said faith is a pathway to finding solutions. Okay. Okay. That works for you. I like mine better. Yeah. <laughs> that works for you. That's okay. <laughs> what does God think about those who seek to justify themselves through the law or good works? Mm -hmm. Let's look at Galatians 3.11. See, what we're doing tonight, this is called reinforcement. Thanks. But what does God think about those who seek to justify themselves through the law or good works? What does Galatians say? Galatians 3.11. Mm -hmm. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident for the just shall live by faith. That's right. Having been saved by grace through faith, we're saved unto good works. Mm -hmm. However, we can't be saved by works alone. Amen. So what righteousness or goodness is acceptable in God's sight? Romans 9, 31, 32. The righteousness and goodness of Christ. 
Right. He is righteous because he, the Father chose him from the foundation of the world. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to move on. How are we doing with time? Pretty good. Um, to the sanctification. Remember, we talked about justification and sanctification. We talked about that two nights in a row. Mm -hmm. So what's the difference? Okay. <laughs> That's uh, a, a one-time. <laughs> Stand, <laughs> Brother Jefferson. What did you say? Oh, no, I was getting, because I was thinking of salvation, because I would say um, justification, uh, I mean, we said sanctification is an ongoing process. <clears throat> but I was getting salvation and um, sanctification. Because uh, was a salvation is a one time. Yeah. Uh, sanctification is an ongoing process through life. Okay. So, why is why is sanctification um, an ongoing process while justification is a one-time act? Well, sanctification is ongoing because everybody doesn't mature or grow in Christ the same. You know, some are still babes in Christ and some, you know, it takes longer. Now, um, just you said justification, right? Yes. That was uh, given to a uh, man by God one time thing. Once you get it, you got it. Okay. I can tell you've been listening to Lakeisha's class too. You've been picking <laughs> up some stuff, Brother Jefferson. <laughs> <laughs> so here we go. Justification is God's declar declaration right. that yeah. the sinner is righteous, yeah. righteous. Jesus Christ. through the work of Jesus Christ. One you time. Mm -hmm. One time. Yeah. One you time. have to have faith. Mm -hmm. and In all of this, we got to have faith. Yeah, you have all to have faith. faith. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sanctification, if we're sanctified, sanctification, God is transforming us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's transforming your whole being. Yes. Takes He's off. working on your mind. He's working on your will. He's working on your behavior. He's working on your affections. He's working on everything through the Holy Spirit. And so it's the continuous process. Now, in Lakeisha's class, we talked about babes and being mm -hmm. sons and being fathers, right? Yeah. With sanctification, even if you get to that grown-up place, the Holy Spirit is still working with you. Amen. Till the day of redemption. Amen. So that's the difference. One, he, the Holy Spirit is continuously working with you. With justification, God make a declaration, declare one time. Right. You're righteous through the work of Jesus Christ. That happens one time. And with sanctification, he sets you apart. Yeah. With the work of the Lord. Separate you. Separate, yes. That's when you yeah. separate. But it's Absolutely. as well. Mm -hmm. So does God's word describe the purpose of our sanctification? And so where do we find that in the Bible? Let's try Ephesians 5.27. Okay. Yes. Oh, 5.27. Yeah, let's try Ephesians 5.27. That we might that we might present it to himself a glorious church, not having a spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be only and without blemish. So God is working with us through the church, right? Yeah. God, Christ is equipping us for our walk and our work here on earth. And as we pray, God's spirit works on us to release power. And as we suffer, the spirit of God ministers to us. Suffering drives us right back to the word and to mm. pray all over again. Mm. So mm. it's like a cycle, right? Mm. Um, so God works with us through prayer and through um, um, the Holy Spirit. And he sanctifies us, cleanses us, and purifies us, mm -hmm. thus preparing us for deeper and more meaningful service. Uh, does God truly dwell in the hearts of his people? 
hopefully, yes. Yes, he does. Why yes. you say that? Because we are his temple. His children. We the Holy Spirit. <laughs> That's right. What did you say, William? I say because we we his temple and he <clears throat> in us because the Spirit and he's the Spirit he dwells in us. That's right. He put yeah. the Holy gave us the Holy Spirit, right? Yeah. Right. So if you're a believer, mm -hmm. then the Bible calls you God's temple because God's Spirit dwells in you. Right. The Holy yeah. Spirit dwells in you. So as children of God, we literally have the Spirit of God living inside of us. We're part of them and he's part of us. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. You're yes. right about that, Deacon Walker. Right. Mm -hmm. We are his eyes, his legs, his arms, you know, like you said, we're his temple. So what is our role in the process of sanctification? What's our role? Well, to admit, trust God, and follow God. Yeah, well, that's true. <laughs> have that faith. Mm-hmm. And walk the way he wants us to walk. You got to deny ourselves and pick up our cross and follow him. For sure. Become more like him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Follow his example. Mm -hmm. So we have an obligation as Christians to take head of the many admonitions, warnings, and exhortations of Scripture because they are the very words of God and a means God has ordained to sanctify us. So we have to go to the Word and do the things that the Word tells us. We, we are also supposed to be uh, um, spreading the Word too, the good news to others. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. So in that particular question, we, we gave three scriptures. One was to daily submit, and that was found in Luke 9, 23. We had to trust God. That was found in Galatians 5, 5. Mm -hmm. And then we had to follow God. That's found in 1 Timothy 6, 11. So three things. We have to daily submit. He said to them, all, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily mm -hmm. and follow me. Daily. And we have to trust God. It means we have to have faith. Yes. And then we have to follow God. We have to flee from those things that are ungodly. Mm -hmm. Follow after righteousness. Well, let trust. Follow and daily commit. Mm -hmm. Yes. Daily submit. Yes. Thank you. So this is an easy one. Is sanctification a lifelong experience? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Why do we say that? Because Why do we say that? Because we are continually. Um, it's a progressive work and you grow continuously. Ongoing process. Taking on the ongoing progress. New and put on the new. Mm -hmm. So if I want to prove it, how would I prove it? Um, they should see. The word. It. <laughs> I read and study his word. Yeah, read for yourself. Yeah, you read, but people should see some difference in you. Yeah, some type of proof. What scripture would you go to? I think I'd go to Philippians, the first chapter, verse six. <laughs> I think that's where I would go. Philippians, what? Philippians, the first chapter, verse six. Being confident of this very thing that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> now there's no doubt. Mm -hmm. okay. So is there anything else that contributes to our sanctification? Anything else? No. Um, so it's me. Uh, it's the truth, belief of the truth, like the word and the word is truth. As it says in Second Thessalonians 2.13. There you go, Selena. That's what we're getting to. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't happen all at once. Mm -mm. But rather takes place over time. Mm 
We yeah. talked about uh -huh. yeah. we talk about that, right? Yes, yeah. we allow the Spirit of God to work the process of sanctification in all through dimensions of our spirit, soul, and body. So what's the end goal of our sanctification? What's the end goal? What, what's the point of all of this? Why we do it? Um, to, to be God asked us to do The likeness of Christ and glorify God. What did you say, Deacon Walker? God asked us to do it. Well, he certainly did. And yeah, he wants us to do good. And like Shalina said, the truth is the truth. And that's my word. God cannot lie. He will not lie. He knows what we need and he supplies it. And these books that you've given us to read today, those are his words. That is true. And we always want to follow his word. Use the Bible as your source. The only word. The only Absolutely. real word. So Philippians 2.15 says, so that you may become blameless and pure children of God without fault in a warped and crooked generation. This generation sure is. Mm -hmm. Then you will shine among them like stars in the sky. So the first thing to do is to glorify God. Yep. It is the will of God that all believers be sanctified. So when we are sanctified, it brings glory to God. And it brings glory to God because once we are sanctified, we're going to be doing those things that will bring glory to God. And also, uh, wouldn't it all? Well, of course, it, it'll make our daily walk a lot safer for us. And when you're walking in God's word, he would open your eyes to things that you were blind before. And some people don't even see, but he would bring things to your attention that you never thought that uh, could harm you or whatever. It's like some people say you fall in pitfalls or whatever, but he gives you warnings. And even the, uh, the people around you if, you, if you ask him to show you the true people or true friends or whatever, he'll show you. Mm -hmm. You might not like yeah. them. You might but... not like what you see. Yeah, but. That's what you call, <laughs> that's what you call discernment from the Holy <laughs> Spirit. Yes, exactly. Yes, we'll give you the sermon. Yes. Isn't that part of transform you into the likeness of Christ? Um, transform into the likeness of Christ is a like we say a daily, mm -hmm. a yeah. daily walk. Yeah, yeah. Based on sanctification. Okay. So the word sanctification is the same word as holiness, meaning a separation. It is the work of the Holy Spirit bringing the whole nature more and more under the influences of the new gracious principles implanted in the soul in regeneration. So we're growing every day. We're learning every day. Um, just like the um, discussion we had earlier about sometimes people are doing things that um, they think they're doing the right thing, but they aren't quite equipped to do what they're doing mm -hmm. but if you keep walking with the lord and you keep reading the word you can grow mm -hmm. you can become equipped so that um you can uh, glorify his name um that is pretty much the kind of um review I had. is there anything else that you think we should go over that i didn't or any particular scripture that stood out for you So if you are evangelizing to somebody and they say, well, why should I have faith? You're going to come up with your five reasons. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you say, yep. <laughs> well, with that, um, I want to thank you all for joining us, especially those who attended all four nights. That was really, um, that was really a um, commitment on your part to do that. Um, I certainly have gotten a lot out of this study myself. Every time I try to teach something, I learn something. Mm -hmm. And so I hope you did as well. Yeah, I and did. I want to remind you that even though 
Um, we're not having vacation Bible school the whole summer long. We are having a special Bible study on Wednesday nights at 6.30. I encourage each and every one of you to join us there because you're going to be in for another treat. Mm. You're going to learn some things that you didn't know before. I can promise you that. <laughs> because every time we study a topic, we learn something new. Mm-hmm. When you read the Bible and you read the same scripture, you can get something else out of it every time you go back to it. Yes. 